Hi, I would like to talk about some of the JavaScript concepts that newcomers uh, trip over and sometimes experienced people as well. Uh, basically, uh, all of this resolve around this and what is this in JavaScript in the context. Uh, to demonstrate how this works, I have uh, set up a simple uh, example that would help uh, you understand uh, this and the concept surrounding this. Basically, all I've done is a, a, a little HTML uh, in which I have created three divs. Uh, one div is the outer div, then there is an inner div and the innermost div. And I set the background for all these three divs to be different in the CSS. And uh, that's all I've done in the CSS, so you can kind of visually see what these divs are. Uh, also, what I have done is uh, I've included jQuery to be able to demonstrate some things and uh, an app.js is the JavaScript file which I will show you as to how it is working. And I've also added a little button here called click me and all it does is it just calls a function called button click. So let's get into the JavaScript code and uh, try to understand the concept surrounding this. So here uh, all uh, this uh, the top function is doing is uh, when the job when the <coughs> jQuery loads or when the document has been loaded all I'm doing is I'm attaching a click function uh, info uh, to all of the three divs so the all of the three divs have a function attached on click called info and uh, what all uh, this info function is doing is basically it gets the mouse or click event. If it checks if the event is not null and it stops the propagation of the event, which basically means that the event has been handled by whoever got that event. And to make this interesting, uh, I am using here the keyword this, uh, which is essentially the talk of this uh, screencast. And uh, what it is doing is it's using a, J, a jQuery uh, selector to select the current element or the current div. And in this case, I just say uh, select this. So whichever div has been clicked uh, is supposed to be selected. And uh, when it is selected, it does a fade out and a fade in. So usually we can see uh, what is happening. So let me just demonstrate this a little bit as to see what's going on. So if I click on the innermost div, So you can see that it blinks, fades in and fade out, which is good. Uh, if I click on the inner one, it clicks the inner div, which basically includes the inner and the innermost div. So you could see both of them clicking. And if I click on the outer div, you can see the whole thing is blinking. Yeah. So this is very interesting. We only have one functional call info and it is referring to something called this. This has, I mean, the way the jQuery calls have been made and things have been set up, this is essentially the context. And the context is uh, changing to whichever div I am uh, obviously clicking. And this is very nice and it's pretty useful feature. So that's how this can be used and you can see it is changing. Now I want to play a little bit trick around this and see how we can manipulate this. So I have set up uh, a function here and I'm going to uncomment that function. And that this is the button click function that I will call uh, when I uh, click on click me. And uh, this is uh, going to use uh, a keyword. Uh, basically, I'm still going to, uh, when the button is clicked, it will call this function info. And the call is a JavaScript uh, way of calling this uh, a function, particular function info. And I can uh, specify uh, the context. In this case, what the context is, instead of just being the particular div I clicked on, I'm, uh, I'm giving it a particular div. In this case, I'm giving it the inner div. And I'm giving it an argument of null because the button doesn't really have uh, any click event. So all this is going to do is info.call is going to call with the inner context and a null argument. So if I refresh this page and let me click on click me and just note and see that the innermost div is going to blink. So you can see the inner uh, div is going to blink, which is basically the two inner is these two are blinking. So we have basically changed the context when we do this. Another way to change the context is to use the apply and I'm going to comment this call and uncomment the apply uh, call and uh, this is uh, basically similar instead of just passing in the arguments 
one after another it passes that as an array argument and uh, the single argument is being passed and I'm going to refresh this and now I click on the click me and you here you can see it is going to set this to be the outer element and I clicked and this set to be the outer element and see you can see it clicks the whole thing so we, as we can see by these uh, calls that we can manipulate uh, how uh, the this function is being uh, handled now let's say if I want to make a little change to this program and be able to um, check how many times this function is being called we can uh, add a little variable called cnt count and I initialize it to zero uh, I, I would like to implement uh, this uh, so that I can uh, log it to the console the value of this variable and uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, uh, increment uh, this variable and log it and see what happens. And so this is all I've done for now and let's see what happens. So if I click on uh, innermost one time, the variable here you can see is zero. If I click on it and then it is still zero and then I click on it, it is still zero. So that's very, uh, that's not what I really wanted to do. I want to be able to uh, see this uh, logging kind of uh, move up and increment in fashion. So what one way I can try to do this is create a closure around this variable C and T and by defining a function called variable A func. All right, so uh, all you can see is I basically defined a function and uh, I want to be able to call this function immediately. So I'm using the concept of ify or immediately executing function and you do that by adding this parenthesis and that's what I've done. And let's see what happens to our program now. So the program uh, is working fine in the sense that it is there. Let me just like conflict me and boom, oh, what happened? It seems like we have a problem and uh, this variable uh, that we have is no longer available. Uh, so the problem is this because um, we have a function defined inside a function and which basically sets this, uh, this to be a different context and we lose this context. How do we uh, solve this problem? You must have heard sometimes in Java this and that. So that's where that comes. So what we want to do is we want to store the variable value this into that and instead of this we want to be able to use that here so let's say if you do that and see what happens uh, I click on it and now you can see it is going up and incrementing this uh, values so which is uh, very good so you can see this value is being incremented for five six seven and uh, here it is so all of this is working so basically to recap all I've shown you is that how use how this is useful in, in the front-end development and how you can change uh, the context this by using the functions call and apply and also if you have a function defined inside another function to uh, get a closure uh, you may lose this context and then in that case you may have to use that and that's pretty much uh, the screencast and I would also like you to uh, see uh, if you want to get some more information you can go to my website and have, I have several tutorials uh, which uh, can be uh, useful. Uh, all, all you have to do is search for Gaur Associates. Here I will search to Gaur Associates. Uh, I go to my website and uh, most of the JavaScript let's say you have, want to search for HTML5. I have resources for HTML5 resources for JavaScript, uh, for front-end frameworks like AngularJS, Backbone.js and uh, also Ember.js. So there are a lot of useful resources and thank you for taking the time to view this uh, short screencast. You have a great day. Thanks. Bye.